kids, it's Miss Melissa. I'm here in my home studio today um, to teach art classes from here. I know it's kind of funny, some of you have asked questions about where I paint and what it looks like and this is it. Um, kind of a crazy place back here in my little um, room at the back of the house. But since we can't be at the studio for a couple of weeks, I'm going to teach lessons um, out here. So this will be something new to try. I do miss all of you so much, and I can't wait till we can be all back in the studio together again laughing and having crazy conversations and, um, and learning and making art together. But for now, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to have art classes on the video today and next Tuesday. And then we're just going to kind of play it by, the, by ear and see what... Um, See where we are then. See if we can go back to the studio after two weeks. If not, we'll just make a new plan and see where we go. So today we are going to draw some rhinoceroses with the little kids and older kids. You're going to be learning about one of my favorite American artists, Grant Wood, and we've got a fun, fun project to do. So as the video plays, um, especially on the rhinoceros video, if you need to start and stop it, um, please feel free to do so. I know I always go kind of fast. And in the studio, I'm able to stop and walk around the table and make sure everybody's where they need to be and see if anybody needs help. I can't do that on a video. So what I need you to do is stop the video if you get a little behind and get caught up and then push play again. Another favor I'm going to ask you is to please take pictures of your artwork and send them to me because that's one of my greatest joys is getting to see um, what everybody creates in the studio. And so I would love for you to take a picture of your artwork and either text it to me or email it to me or put it on Facebook or somehow let me see what you have created today. So I think everyone has my phone number, but if not, it is 806 336-4486. My email is melissa.studio at yahoo.com. And of course, you can always find me on the Dandelion Studio Facebook page. So I look forward to seeing what you create. And let's get to it. Hi, kids. Before we get started today, I want to talk to you a minute about art supplies and what you're going to need today. Um, if you have a sketchbook or some art paper, um, at home, that is great. If you don't, though, don't worry about it. Um, let me show you what else you can use. Here I've got a paper sack um, from the Honey Farm. Just a shopping bag that I cut open, cut it apart. And then you can use these flat panels to draw on. Now, some people don't like drawing on brown paper, but there are other artists who really love brown paper. In fact, if you go to um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you can find pads of brown paper in the art supplies because some people really enjoy that, that look. So if you don't have that, um, this is just an empty, um, like an empty cereal box that you can cut apart and then you've got some really um, nice thick panels. These are great to add paint to because they're so heavy. You can always use um, a piece of notebook paper. The lines don't matter. Once your beautiful artwork is on there, um, it's going to cover up the lines, and even if it doesn't, nobody's going to care. Or you can use um, just plain white um, paper from your printer, copy paper, which is what um, I've been using um, with the little kids in the videos today. So you are the bigger kids, so we're going to get on with your lesson. I've been drawing a rhinoceros all day, so it's kind of nice to, to get to talk to some older kids now. So we're going to start talking about um, an, an American artist today named Grant Wood. Now, I have shown this painting to so many of my classes over the years, and you may or may not have seen it. And we're going to talk briefly about this one by Grant Wood and then move on to his most famous painting, which I'm sure you'll all recognize. Um, but there's so many good things in this one that I want to show you. The title of this painting is Parson Weems' Fable. If you look at it, the first thing that most people notice is um, George Washington's head off of the dollar bill 
on this little kid's body. Um, kids usually get a kick out of that the first time they figure out what that is. That looks kind of funny. Um, but he did this to make sure that we knew who this character was. He wanted to make sure um, that we knew exactly what this story was and who this character was. So we've all heard the fable of George Washington chopping down the cherry tree and his father comes to him and says, George, did you chop down this cherry tree? And he says, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the, the cherry tree. Well, that never happened. <laughs> this is a fable made up by a man named Parson Weems. And this is Parson Weems right here. Now the symbolism here is that Parson Weems is standing outside of a theatrical curtain. He's pulling back the curtain and we see the scene going on behind it. So it tells us right off that this is a made up story. That this didn't truly happen. So we have Parson Weems here, George Washington, and his father. Now, they, we talk a lot about different elements of art, and there's a couple of elements um, in this painting that are really, really dominant and really easy to see. The first one in this is repetition. We're going to talk about the repetition of shape in this painting. The trees are circular. All over the painting, we see these circular trees, and then we see the dirt around the tree is in a circle. The buttons on the coats are circular and the pom-poms hanging off the curtain are circular. Now if you look really really closely at these pom-poms you will see see if I can get it up here that those are actually cherries. <laughs> they kind of go with the story of chopping down the cherry tree. The next element that we're going to talk about in this painting is line. Now, when you talk about line, it's not necessarily lines that, um, that you draw like this. We're talking about lines that direct your vision and direct your eye over this painting. All of the lines in this painting are pointing to the story here. If you see this line back here, the shading is pointing to the tree. As, as it is on this side, the shading is pointing to the tree. The line here coming down at the edge of the house or the edge of the building is pointing at the axe. Even back here in the background, the ladder is pointing to the action that's taking place here in, this, in the center. Then we also see um, their hands are pointing. Here, Parson Weems' hand is pointing towards George Washington. His father is pointing to him. Even George Washington is pointing at his axe. So it's all centered around this action right here. What has happened here? He's chopped down the cherry tree. Now, I used to have a black Labrador <laughs> named Skipper, and we had a cherry tree about this size. And one day I looked out in the backyard, and Skipper had chewed down the cherry tree and was dragging it across the yard. So every time I see this painting, I also think of Skipper and how he chopped down our cherry tree, and he couldn't deny it either. We all knew who, who, who had done it. He was caught in the act. Another interesting thing, though, about this painting that I really want to point out to you is that he was making a social statement also with this painting. We see the center action right here of George Washington and his father and Parson Weems and the curtain showing that it's a fable, that it didn't really happen. But look in the background. Here we see two slaves working. Um, she looks like she is picking cherries and he has a ladder that he's about to maybe climb up the, the tree and pick some cherries, but they're working back here. So not only do we see slaves working, but here comes the interesting part. They're under a dark cloud. I just think that's fascinating that Grant Wood was not only painting this famous scene and adding some humor into it with, with the, um, the grown-up head on the little kid's body and um, the cherries on the curtain, but he was also making a social statement about slavery, that the slaves are standing under a dark cloud. And I think that's fascinating. So we're going to go on now to his most famous painting, the one that you have seen 
probably hundreds of times and maybe not known all of the story behind it. But that is a painting called American Gothic. Now there is quite a story behind this painting, which is very, very fascinating to me. I think all of Grant Wood's paintings have, have interesting details and interesting stories that go along with them. Um, this is, of course, American Gothic, painted in 1930 by Grant Wood. It is currently on display in Chicago at the Chicago Art Institute, and I don't believe it has ever um, been anywhere else. He, um, he studied at the Institute and painted this painting for a competition that was at the Art Institute in Chicago. He came in third place. He didn't win the top prize. But what's interesting is who knows who won first prize. This is the one that everyone remembers. This is the one that's famous, was the third place winner. It has been seen um, in movies, in commercials, um, in cartoons, in comic strips. It has been seen everywhere. Everyone is familiar with American Gothic. One of the reasons they're fam familiar with it is because so many people have created a parody of it where they have kind of made fun of it and they've added their own spin to it. Um, this painting is also in the movie The Night of the Museum. If you're familiar with those movies, um, these characters are in those movies. But let me kind of give you a backstory of American Gothic and kind of what Grant Wood was thinking when he painted this. He lived in Iowa. He grew up in Cedar Rapid, Rapids, Iowa. And one day he was traveling through a town um, called Eldon, Iowa. And he drove by this house that he saw. And the house is from um, an architectural style called Gothic. And so he drove by this house and it was, he was almost offended by it. He thought it was so ugly and so out of date and so run down and he could not imagine who would possibly live in such a horrible house. So from there, his Im imagination kind of ran away with him and he started to imagine this story of who might live in such an ugly house. And that's where this painting came from. Well, he found two models. We're going to go back in a little while, talk about who modeled for this, because that's also a funny story. Um, he found two models, and he painted this painting. He entered it in the contest. He won third place. But what happens next is really fascinating. <clears throat> because his painting was published for being the third place winner, and it was seen all over the country. Well, a lot of people on the East Coast, art critics on the East Coast, did not like it. And they said that it was um, humorous and that it showed how backwards the people of Iowa must be. Um, backwards, if you think of like rednecks or low class or not very intelligent. And so, of course, the people in Iowa were greatly offended by that. The women were especially offended because they did not like the way they were depicted. And they said, our hair does not look like that. We do not wear those kinds of clothes. We are not backward. We are not homely looking. And so they started writing letters um, complaining about this painting. So you have the art critics on the East Coast making fun of it and criticizing it. And then you have the people in Iowa who were offended by it because they didn't like the way it made them look. And all of a sudden, this painting was thrust into the spotlight. And that's when it became very, very famous. So people started asking Grant Wood who these people were. And he wouldn't tell them. They said, well, is this a father and a daughter because she looks a lot younger? Or are they married? What is the relationship? Who are these people? Are they real people? Do they really live in this house? What is their story? And Grant Wood loved all the questions. He loved the controversy. And he refused to tell anyone 
the story behind his painting. He just wanted them to keep talking about it and to keep guessing and to keep asking questions. 